What's going on, smart people? It is tensor time. In the last tensor calculus for physics video, I mentioned that any arbitrary second rank tensor can be expressed as the sum of a symmetric tensor and an anti-symmetric tensor. And that's what we're going to be proving today. Let's just jump right into it. Before we go about proving we can write it as a sum of a symmetric and anti-symmetric, we got to define our terms. What does this mean? Well, this all has to do with what happens when we swap indices. If we let this t mu nu go to a t nu mu. And what does that correspond to? That's just taking the transpose of our original tensor. So this is just equal to t mu nu transpose. Wow, that's a terrible choice of a tensor name with the transpose also being a t. But I think you get the t I think you get the idea. I'm not raising the tensor component to the power of a tensor. This is just the transpose. And when we talk about symmetry versus anti-symmetry, it's all what happens to the tensor when we do this, when we take this transpose. So for a symmetric tensor, nothing happens. Symmetric. T mu nu is equal to T nu mu, which is equal to T mu nu transpose. Okay, so this is like saying if we have our regular tensor, our T11, T12, dot, 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 T21, that's saying when we swap these, T12 is equal to T21. It would have to be, right? If we're swapping our row with our column, that's exactly what this is saying. One example of a symmetric tensor would be like the metric tensor, or maybe the inertia tensor. These are all symmetric tensors. This is a comma. That's not another index. Now, for an anti-symmetric tensor, anti, uh, we get a negative sign. We get a relative negative sign when we take this transpose. So that's saying that t mu nu is equal to minus t nu mu, which is equal to minus t mu nu transpose. And this one's a little bit more interesting to me because if we're saying that the matrix element is equal to the negative of the transpose of the matrix element, well, we get an interesting consequence if we let those be diagonal terms, if we set mu equal to nu. So for mu equal to nu, we're saying that t mu mu is equal to minus t mu mu. And that can only be true if these matrix elements are zero. So that's why with anti-symmetric tensors, you get a diagonal of zeros when you work with them in some matrix representation. Well, actually, in general, because you don't have to impose them onto a matrix, but... Uh, an example of an anti-symmetric tensor would be like the electromagnetic field strength tensor, F mu nu. Okay, so now that we got our terminology down, let's get to proving this here. And we're going to do it by just adding and subtracting the same things from, uh, from just our T mu nu. So if we take T mu nu, what I want to do is I want to add and subtract, well first let's just add half of it plus half of it. Let's just do that. Just humor me. So this is definitely equal to one half t mu nu plus one half t mu nu. Right? We're just, we're multiplying all of the matrix elements of this tensor by half and then adding them to the half again. Okay? So this is true. And then what I also want to do is I want to add and subtract the transpose. So I want to say that this is also equal to this plus t nu mu minus, and, and let's throw, let's actually throw one half on here as well. So plus one half t nu mu <coughs> minus one half t mu nu. That way we get a factor of one half that we can factor out, which will be nice. And the positive term, so I want to collect these together and collect these together. So this is equal to one half t mu nu plus t nu mu plus one half t mu nu minus t nu mu. Okay, maybe at fed face value you can't tell the nature of what these objects are, but one of these is going to be symmetric and one of these is going to be anti-symmetric. And the way that you can tell is because of the way that it is. Now, uh, for this, if we were to swap the indices here, if we were to define some m mu nu equal to t mu nu plus t nu mu, well, this is this. It doesn't matter which way we we uh, we multiply 
or sorry, we add these uh, components together. If we do this first, then this, or this first, then this, nothing, nothing changes, right? So that's, that's equivalent to saying if we were to swap these indices, nothing changes. So this has to be a symmetric tensor in itself. And we can see this if we actually look at, say, say the matrix element here. So if we want to look at M mu nu, look at its matrix representation, uh, so it's going to be, let's just work for, I know I've used Greek indices, but let's just go with a 3 by 3. Um, so we'll do 1, 1, so that's going to be a T, 1, 1, plus a T, 1, 1. So that's just going to give us a 2, T, 1, 1. And then we've got a T, 1, 2, plus a T, 2, 1. And a T, 1, 3, plus T, 3, 1. And then we go down a column, so T21 plus T12, and those match up as they should if we swap, if we take the transpose of this tensor, so that's good. And then we're going to have a 2, T22, and then a T23 plus T32. And then let's just do a couple more. So then this gives us a, uh, a T31 plus T13. That matches up as it should. A T32 plus T23 matches up. And a 2T33. Um, so yes, when we actually put this into a matrix, we gather up all the terms, we do get a symmetric tensor. That's because it doesn't matter which way we add these matrix elements together. Now for the other term, it gets a little bit more interesting. And let's take a look at that now. Okay, so let's erase this. And now let's let m mu nu just equal this, but with the minus sign, with that relative minus sign. Okay, so if we were to take the transpose of both sides, if we were to take the transpose of both sides here, uh, so we get a t nu mu minus a t mu nu, this is not the same equation. Right? This is this is exactly the negative of this, exactly what an anti-symmetric tensor would be. If we multiplied this whole thing by a minus sign, then we get a negative here and a positive here, and then we get back where we started. So that works, that's fine. And that's exactly the characteristic of an anti-symmetric tensor. And if that's not visual enough for you, let's go ahead and uh, put these matrix elements in a matrix itself. So let's go ahead and do the anti-symmetric part. So M mu nu is equal to, and this is where we get our, uh, our zero diagonal terms like thrown in our face because if we have t11 minus t11, that's just going to be a zero. t12 minus t21, t13 minus t31, and let's just look at the next row. So this is going to be a t21 minus t12. And exactly this is the negative of this. If we multiplied this term here by negative 1, we would get this term here. So this is going to be an anti-symmetric tensor. And that completes our proof. Really, the proof was completed here, but this is just more so for a visual representation of why this stuff is anti-symmetric. Another characteristic of uh, these anti-symmetric tensors is this minus sign. For example, with the electromagnetic field strength tensor, this is equal to the partial mu a nu minus d nu a mu. So you, go, you always get that, that minus sign where if you have like with like, you know, the diagonal element, you're going to subtract from it and get zero. So now let's just call, let's come up with a new name for these terms here. Let's call this s mu nu, s for symmetric. We'll call this a mu nu, a for anti-symmetric, and we get T mu nu is equal to S mu nu plus A mu nu. Nothing crazy here. This was a pretty simple proof, but uh, I, I feel like I don't do enough examples of what to do things with tensors. It's always just on to the next. So here's a fun little example to do. Go show your friends how you can write a tensor as a symmetric and anti. I don't, I don't know what you do. I don't know your life. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comment section if you did. And I'll see you guys there.